four two. We are continuing to talk about quadratics. So again, we are working with some more graphing. Four one and four two are our graphing lessons here, and we are looking at more standard form though. So lesson four one was more vertex form. We're doing that a x minus h squared plus k. Now we're going to focus more on the standard form. So you'll notice up here. A quadratic function in standard form is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You've heard that standard form before, guys. You use that in algebra 1. That's the form we go to when we're trying to factor, or we're trying to use quadratic formula, or any of that stuff. Um, review. The graph of a quadratic function is a, what's that word? Parabola. Okay or however you pronounce it, official pronunciation, parabola. Um, we've already worked with the function above can be written in the form f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. That is the vertex form we've already worked with, so that should be familiar. You guys already know, review, a parabola has a vertex, and that vertex is at hk. We've also already talked about axis of symmetry. That axis of symmetry goes through the middle of the parabola and it's x equals h. We talked yesterday, the vertex of the parabola is either the max or the min, right? When is it the max? Yeah. When your parabola is upside down and that vertex is at the top, it's a maximum, okay? When the vertex is, when the parabola is right side up and the vertex is at the bottom, then it's a minimum, okay? So you guys have to know the difference between max and min. You guys had to answer some max and min stuff yesterday, last night in homework, right? Okay, and we're going to have more max and min stuff in homework tonight. Now, Homework will be open. It won't all be due, though. Okay, new stuff today. Although, new for this year, you learned in Algebra 1. The equation, h equals negative b over 2a, and k equals f of h, can be used to find h and k. So, first of all, in these notes, it's listed h equals negative b over 2a. Um, generally speaking, you will often see it as x equals negative b over 2a, and that is a way to find the axis of symmetry. And you probably can't read my little blur, what turned into a blurb there. That was supposed to say negative b over 2a. A little bit better there, I think. Oh, now there's a... Is it better? Did I make it worse? It looks glare. It looks like there's a glare because of the whiteout I used. Okay. It says negative b over 2a. x equals negative b over 2a. So, um, when we talk about axis of symmetry today, and you have an equation in standard form. We're going to talk about using negative b over 2a to find our axis of symmetry. Um, and then right here when it says to find k, it's f of h. All that means is taking your value you find, your axis of symmetry, and plugging it into the equation. And we'll practice that. Okay? So, our ex first example here. What is the vertex form? of y equals 2x squared plus 10x plus 7. So, if they're asking for vertex form, you guys remember vertex form? It's up at the top of your paper. What's vertex form? Nope. <laughs> Vertex form, y equals a, a times x minus a plus square plus k. 
Okay. Now, when we talk vertex form, guys, there's three pieces you have to be able to fill in in vertex form, just like yesterday. Okay? We have to be able to fill in H and K, which are vertex, and A. Now, what form is given there? That 2x squared plus 10x plus 7. That is our standard form. And if you recall, standard form from up above, which is what Jake was trying to tell me, is AX squared plus BX plus C. Can you guys identify your ABCs? What's A? 2X squared. But what is just A? 2, the number in front of x squared. So what is B? 10. And what is C? 7. Now, I said we have to know three things to fill in vertex form. And that is A and then H and K. What do we already know out of those three? We know A. We know A. On this type of problem, when you're given standard form, Yesterday, A was the more difficult thing to find. Today, A is given. A is right there in the equation staring at you. So we don't have to find A. A is 2 because it's the coefficient or the number in front of x squared. Now, we've got to find H and K. To do this, we're going to start by finding the axis of symmetry. What were you given that can help me help us find the axis of symmetry? Given B and, a. and the formula? Negative B over 2A? Okay, that's one you saw. I can guarantee you guys saw that formula in Algebra 1. Um, I can't honestly remember what the current I-step formula sheet looks like. I need to pull it out and look at it. But I know the previous I-step formula sheet provided that. I'm not sure if it, this one does or not. I can't remember. So, I generally tend to say x equals negative b over 2a. Realize if you would rather write h, that's fine. Okay? I'm writing it as the equation that it's x equals a number, but it's also going to find h. It's going to find the first number in the vertex. So, set this up. If it's negative b over 2a, what are we doing here? Negative of, what's B? 10 over 2A. So 2 times 2. So I have negative 10 over 2 times 2. Do the math. We have negative 10 over 4. Can we reduce that? Yes. Negative 10 fourths reduces to B. 5 halves. Negative 5 halves. So options here is you can use, you can leave it as negative 5 halves. Or what else do you guys know about negative 5 halves? Okay. This 2 goes into 5 2 times, 1 left over. So that's 2 and a half. If you do 5 divided by 2 in the calculator, it's going to tell you that. Okay, your options at this point. If you're doing it for me, I don't care. I will take that the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5 halves, or I'll take negative 2.5. If you're doing it for math Excel, 50-50 shot on what they want. Sometimes they will accept both. However, there are a lot of times where they're going to be picky and they want one or the other and not either or. So, my axis of symmetry, you guys want to use the fraction or the decimal? There's advantages and disadvantages. So, if I ask what the axis of symmetry is, it is x equals negative 2.5. 
So yeah, it's a decimal. That happens. We're going to work with it. Good news is we don't have to graph this, so you won't have to graph the decimal. Now, if that's the X of symmetry, what letter does that go in for? H. That's H, because that is the first half of my vertex. So I now know A. I now know H. If I know the first half of my vertex, how can I find the second half of my vertex? Do I what? No. Plug it in. Plug it in? Yeah. If I know X. Well, I can't plug it into vertex form because I don't know enough for vertex form. But do we have a standard form here? Yeah. If I know an X and I have a standard form here, we can plug that X in to get our Y. Okay. Um, again, we're using a decimal, so you're probably going to want a calculator. It's not the you know best setup, but it's going to work. So what I'm going to write here is that right now I'm trying to find my vertex. I already know my vertex is negative 2.5 comma something. And I know that negative 2.5 because it was the axis of symmetry. Remember yesterday, the first number in the axis or the first number in the vertex is always the axis of symmetry. So take this negative 2.5 and plug it in. So y equals 2 times negative 2.5 squared plus 10 times negative 2.5 plus 7. Can you grab a calculator and do the math? So, uh, now, let me ask you something. Negative 2.5 squared. What should negative 2.5 squared come out to be in terms of a sign? Positive. Teaching moment. If I do negative 2.5 squared on my calculator, like that, notice my calculator just turned it to a negative. You have to be smarter than the calculator here, because that calculator thinks I thinks that I wanted it to square 2.5 and put a negative on it. Options include, if you know a negative times a negative is a positive, do you have to enter the negative in the calculator? No, you could just do, and I guess 2.5 squared, right? The other option is, if you require in your brain to make everything happy, to put that negative on there, put parentheses around it, negative 2.5 parentheses and then squared, and now notice it shows me positive. Okay, so calculator tip of the day. Most scientific calculators have that issue. And what do I do with that 6.25? Times it by two. 6.25 times two is going to be 12.5. What about 10 times negative 2.5? Minus 25. 25. And then we still have a plus 7. So 12.5 minus 25 plus 7. Negative 5.5. What is this negative 5.5 value? It's the y. So it is the second half of the vertex. And it is also the k value. Do I have all of my information to write my equation now? Yes. Okay. You should be able to write that vertex form. So y equals a, which is 2, because that was given. X minus, what's H? 
negative 2.5. So x minus negative 2.5 really becomes plus 2.5. Quantity squared plus k. It's plus negative 5.5, or I'm just going to say minus 5.5. Okay, how is that process? I say it. There's a bit of length to it. I know decimals don't make it easy, but decimals are part of life too. We also can't always avoid them. Gentlemen, can you focus up here, please? I don't think you're in a city either today, sir. Debatable. Okay, B. Vertex form again. So what do they give me? They're giving me ABC, yes? Because this is already AX squared plus BX plus C. So what are my ABCs? Okay. A is the negative in front of X squared, so negative 1. B is 4, and C is specifically negative 5. And honestly, all we have to have on this problem are A and B right now. But it's, anytime I get the opportunity, I practice our ABCs. So vertex form, I'll write it down again. Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K. We need to know A, H, and K. What do I already know? A is negative 1. So do you know how to find H? We find the what? Axis of symmetry. How do we find axis of symmetry? Okay. X equals negative B over 2A. Or in other words, remember this is helping us find H. You can say H equals negative B over 2A. Negative B. What's negative of B? Negative 4 over 2A. 2 times A is negative 1. So becomes negative 4 over negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2? Positive 2. So what is that? Okay. My axis of symmetry is x equals 2. And in your formula, the axis of symmetry is represented by what letter? H. Okay. What do you know about your vertex at this exact moment? Okay, so I know my vertex, because it lies on that axis of symmetry, is 2 comma something. So 2 comma something. How do I find the something? Plug it in where? Okay, plug it into the given equation. So take that number we just found and plug it into what we were given. Now, this means, okay, so negative x squared is going to be the negative of 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 5.
How's that negative x squared work in this situation? Okay, so when they have that negative, when the equation was written negative x squared, your, your result is going to be negative, whatever it does, because we're squaring the number, so it doesn't matter what you're squaring, that's going to come out to be a positive. So 2 squared is 4. That negative says to turn around and make it negative. So we're going to think of this as negative 4 plus 4 times 2 is 8 minus 5. Negative 4 plus 8 minus 5. Negative 1. Negative 1. So I just found y to be negative 1. Two important things about that negative 1. What is it? It's K. And the second half of the vertex, right? Okay. Final equation. Y equals is my help. What's A? Negative 1. Now, I'm not actually going to write negative 1. I'm just going to put a negative. In parentheses, x minus h, what am I putting? x minus 2, don't forget your squared, plus k, plus negative 1, or minus 1 is what I'm going to say. Okay, I do want to try and go through this example 2a, especially while I have sophomores here today, to at least get us started, and then we'll pick up tomorrow and go from there. So example 2, it asks us, do these questions look familiar? What are the yeah, vertex, axis of symmetry, Max, min, value, and range. They left out domain. Did you guys have to answer domain on homework? I forget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you answered the same thing every time, so. Okay. Now, as we look at this, guys, what is it we can find first here? Based on the fact they're giving me standard form. Nope. Disagree. Well, where do I start, though? You just do the vertex form, then you'll figure out what the vertex is. Okay, so you're saying if we just did the same problem we did last time? Yeah. Okay, so what did we start off finding last time? I guess you guys are going to say A. I'm going to argue we don't do we need to find A. Well, overall, other than we identified... What was the first big thing we found? Axis of symmetry, yes? That was the first big thing we found. Now, I would say, can you identify your ABCs before we actually find that? So, again, I keep writing this as a reminder. AX squared plus BX plus C. What are my ABCs on this problem? A is 2. B is 8. C is negative 2, not that it really matters here. Now, one thing you do know right now, and we'll talk, we'll come back and talk about it more later, A is 2. What does that tell me about how my parabola looks if A is 2? It's opening up, yes. Because A is specifically positive 2, my parabola opens up. If my parabola opens up, when we get to that problem, is this going to be a max or a min problem? Where is my vertex? My vertex is at the bottom. And so this is going to be a minimum. Now, we can't really find what that minimum value is until 
until after we found the vertex. So, axis of symmetry. Okay, guys. What's that formula for axis of symmetry? Negative B over 2A. So negative B is going to be negative 8. 2 times A, which is 2. Negative 8 divided by 4. And negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. That was the very first thing they asked me to find, yes? And it is also, if you want it on there, it's your h. Okay. Honestly, we don't really need to talk about h and k here, but it's a good reminder. What do you find after your axis of symmetry? Now, after axis, we have to find the vertex. What do we know currently about the vertex? Negative 2. Okay. What do I do with that negative 2? Plug it in to our standard form. So y equals 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 minus 2. It's doing the math there. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 2 is minus 16 minus 2. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. What is this negative 10? It's the k value, and it's the second piece of my vertex. So do I know my vertex now? Yes. Now, we already talked. My vertex is at the bottom of the parabola. So that makes it a minimum. Okay, guys, recall from yesterday. What is the minimum value? The y value. How low does my parabola go? Well, I go left 2 and 10 down. So right there, it's a minimum of negative 10. If, finish up, hold on, freeze, range. If it's a minimum, where, minimum is negative 10. Where is the rest of my parabola? Up. So it's above this value, y greater than or equal to negative 10. Okay, we will continue notes tomorrow. Okay, um, as of right now, I'm thinking we may or may not get through all of them tomorrow. We'll see what happens. So,